Well, it finally happened. They gave up. They're letting us preach. Our history as a church uh, is kind of a long one uh, in terms of, well, just being a church in general. Yeah, 159 uh, years. To be exact, yes. To be exact. Okay, all right. Um, but it also is full of us planting churches and doing missions and starting new churches. Uh, our members go out and they invest in the community, um, empowering different people to do different things uh, throughout the community. Um, and that's not only here in our community in Waxahachie or Ellis County, uh, but, I mean, we do mission stuff around the world um, in a bunch of different countries. And yeah. one, of, one of the main ones is Kenya. Jeff, you've gone to Kenya multiple times. Yeah, so we, yeah, our church really does a lot of things investing in, in lives of people abroad. You know, we, you know, we have uh, several different missionaries that we support. Right. But, but obviously, I, I've done a lot of work in Kenya. Um, but one of the coolest things is, is it's not really just about the trips that we take. Mm-hmm. Um, because our church is really in this um, this partnership with Kenya, right? With our not the country as right, a whole, not right. Kenya as a country, but right. but a, specifically a church in Kenya, Koinonia Baptist Church. Our churches um, are together in this partnership, and so even when we're not there, ministry is happening yeah. um, that we support. That's cool, right? So uh, so I've taken um, a few trips over there. We've taken students, we've taken uh, college students, we've taken adults. Um, and we get involved in this this um, training of of pastors in really remote location in Kenya. And so we, we train pastors and we train adult church leaders on how to do church, right? Mm-hmm. How to um, to to really uh, serve their communities yeah. and serve uh, their churches. But so so what what does that really look like? Like after you guys leave, like we take a trip out, mm-hmm. and then when you guys come back. What does that look like over there once you actually leave? Like, what are we doing past that, and how does that work through there? Yeah, so so it really happens before and then after, mm-hmm. right? So before we ever got there, um, this this group went out to this really remote spot and mm-hmm. found uh, new believers, right? Mm-hmm. And they decided to, all over this portion of, of uh, their country, mm-hmm. to start new churches, okay. right? Well, all of these new churches needed pastors, mm-hmm. right? And and a lot of the people who are believers in that area um, don't know how to read or write, even. It can be an issue when you're teaching, yeah. reading the Bible, right? Yeah, yeah. teaching <laughs> a written text. Right, right. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, and so uh, what happened was is these, these people kind of saw this huge need. Mm-hmm. And then we came in, and we kind of felt God calling us to partner with this this church who are ministering to somebody who's not even in their own county, right? Like they're ministering. This is like a mission of them yeah, to go out to this awesome. remote spot. And so, um, anyways, and we we host these kind of like um, events that that focus on either children or adults or whatever. But then even after we leave, um, this church still sends people out uh, to go and teach these pastors, um, gives them basic theological training, um, teaches them how to. Um, preach using a storytelling method because a lot of them don't know how to read. So they teach them stories of the Bible that that way they can preach and share the gospel gotcha. um, with. And so it's really cool because because of our church and what we do and, and our desire to to really make a difference not only in mm-hmm. Waxahachie or Ellis County but also through the world. Um, we you know we pay for we mm-hmm. provide this theological training for these pastors, but then also we provide children's literature and training for those teachers. So, and, so it really sounds more like a partnership yeah. between the two rather than a, hey, we're going to come in, do one trip, and then we're out of here, you know, type yeah. thing. And so people are being saved and churches are being planted mm-hmm. that you and I will never know the names of. That's awesome. So That's awesome. Um, and so and so one of the cool things is, is not only do we do things mm-hmm. outside of our country, but We've invested just through the history of our church, invested a lot of time and and effort and and things in inside of our community and mm-hmm. and just in general. Our church our church is a very um, mission difference driven church. Right, right. Make a difference. Yeah, make a difference <laughs> for sure. So I mean, think about this. In December, right, we had this huge offering. Yep. Right to pay up front for all of our mission emphasis right for all of our make a difference emphasis right and our church collected 
like almost five hundred thousand dollars. Yep. Five. Our church gave. Can you look at that? Our church gave five hundred thousand dollars. Wait, but the, what the crazier part is, it's just in December. Yeah, just in December. Just in December, we gave five hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. I mean, I mean, that's crazy. Yeah. My my first church that I worked at, yeah. like that's like tripled their budget. Tripled the, just the whole year. Yeah, the whole budget. church. Yeah. The whole yeah. church. Budget. Our church generously yeah. gave five hundred thousand dollars to making a difference. Right. Um, and so and so God really put um, our like a commitment on our heart mm-hmm. to fulfill that commitment first, right? To 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 do that. Yeah. Because we didn't know this. We didn't know this. But uh, there's something big that happened in 2020, um, this giant pandemic that happened. Who would have thought? <laughs> yeah. Who would have thought that, you know, we, you know, all these organizations that would need this money up front because they probably wouldn't get it during the year. Yeah. We were able to give it to them up front. We didn't, trust me, none of us knew the pandemic was coming. No, okay? at all. I promise you, I didn't. I promise you, Jeff didn't. David didn't. Chet did. I promise you, none of us knew that no. was coming. So that's yeah. that's pretty crazy. That's that's God so, working right there. Yeah, and yeah. so you think about the, all these these organizations that we we help. I mean, even our friends in Kenya, right, right who are still suffering the, from the pandemic over there. Um, but we were able to give them our entire year's yeah. uh, uh, support mm-hmm. in December before the year even started. Yeah. And and so in the time when nonprofits have been financially hurting, um, we were able to support them before it ever happened, right? That's, so God, that's crazy. yeah, God did something really cool that's awesome. um, through our church, and uh, and it's something that we can really um, we can really be proud of, yeah. right? That that right. God put that in our heart, and that and that we were able to support them. And you know, one of the one of the people who we support mm-hmm. is is Common Ground Ministry, right? Mm-hmm. right? And so uh, Common Ground is a ministry uh, to kids. Um, and so we're really proud to support them and, and through all the stuff that they do in, um, in building relationships and sharing the gospel mm-hmm. with those children. But, but also, I mean, we do that giant toy drive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Every year? Every, every year. And we, yeah. um, we donate hundreds of toys to right. Common Ground. Mm-hmm. And um, we're really, really proud of all that Common Ground does. But we're also proud to just for us to be a part of what God is doing there. Sure. We got a quick video that's going to show you a little bit more about what they're about and what they do. First Baptist Waxahachie is making a difference. Because of your faithful generosity, over 1,000 children have been impacted by Common Ground Ministries. In partnership with First Waxahachie, Common Ground was founded in 1991 as a Christian-based after-school and summer mentoring program for at-risk children in Waxahachie. Working with students from kindergarten through fifth grade, students in the program are provided with mentoring opportunities as well as Bible studies. The main goal of the program is to assist each individual to realize the potential within them. FBC Waxahachie has been working with and supporting Common Ground since its inception as one of our local ministry partners. And God has truly blessed many students through this ministry. Your gifts to First Baptist help support the life-changing ministry of Common Ground. One of the other ministries that we support as a church is First Look Pregnancy Center. Mm -hmm. Um, and so one of the cool things about First Look is they provide, like, nurses, like clinical support. Mm-hmm. Um, they also uh, provide counseling. Mm-hmm. Um, but then also they, they really supply spiritual needs. They, they mm-hmm. you know, they work on the spiritual side of, of um, people reaching their, their spiritual needs um, for, for new moms, for people who are expecting. Mm-hmm. Um, so they're, they're really this... Um, this really cool organization um, that just helps um, mothers, expecting mothers, um, in a time of, of need and uncertainty. Yeah. Uh, here's a video that's going to show you a little bit more about First Look. First Baptist Waxahachie is making a difference. First Look gives both men and women the tools they need to make informed decisions regarding sexual health and pregnancy. They offer answers to common questions about abortion, adoption, and parenting. First Look enables clients to have access to experienced nurses and staff who will provide every care they need and the answers clients seek confidentially and at no cost. Each client who comes to First Look hears the gospel presented. Last year, 23 clients trusted Jesus Christ as Savior. Since 1996, 20,000 people have been reached with God's love in action. FBC Waxahachie has been working with and supporting First Look as one of our local ministry partners. 
Because of your faithful generosity last year, 142 mothers at risk for abortion chose life. Your gifts to First Baptist help support the life-changing ministry of First Look. So not only does our church uh, make a difference with organizations or partner with organizations and do mission work overseas, but uh, obviously one of the biggest things that we do is actual life change for individual people that we come in contact with. Yeah. Uh, as, as we've talked about and as you know, that a life of, with Christ, a faith in Christ is a relationship. It's a relational, um, relational thing. And that translates over into how we interact with each other, with new people that come to the church, with people in the community. And that's one of the main ways we make a difference is our relationships as Christians with other people. Yeah. Um, yeah, just so. just investing in people's lives, yeah, right? Exactly. Um, and so not just, and and the truth is that's not just with dollars, right? Right. That's with right. time. That's with through Bible study. That's mm-hmm. through um, through sermons. Yeah. Um, that's through everyday interactions. We invest in people, mm-hmm. but then also it's important for us to just encourage our our membership, right? Mm-hmm. Our people to go out and invest in the lives of right. others too. I think right. one of the biggest. Um, I guess signs that someone is a disciple mm-hmm. is if they're creating other disciples. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. So, so what are you doing to, to encourage life change right. in, in the next person? Right. 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 How many people have you brought in yourself? Yeah. Yeah. Well, here's a, here's a video about what could happen uh, to a person's life if you go out and make a difference. My name is Lisa Boltman. Um, I live in Waxahachie. I'm a member of the church here. Um, we love it. I guess you could say that God changed me a lot. I was so lost. I was a complete wreck. Um, And it wasn't until one of my very best friends um, knew where I was at that I was just lost and she invited me to church. I just, I wept like a baby because it was the first time I saw Jesus. Like I just, I had missed him all that time going to church. I had just missed him. I don't know how, but um, my life has never been the same. I went from um, you know, being this very manipulative, controlling woman, girl, um, played the victim, just used everybody in my life, and I prided myself on that, that I could manipulate people and still get them to like me. Um, I had attempted suicide, I used drugs and alcohol to fill in all this emptiness I had. and. Um, I was in a horrible relationship with my now husband that God completely restored us um, to be together. But I've had abortions. I was just, I was really lost. Um, And then that day, my whole world changed. God slowly worked on me. He pulled out all that mess that I had created um, in my life and slowly (laughs) pruned me. Uh, I mean, there's no other way that I can say it that it was totally God because if you would have seen me before, um, you may not have given me much. You probably would have thought, oh, I need to share the gospel with her, but I'm afraid because she looks kind of, you know, maybe hopeless, but there's definitely hope. Um, I mean, the life I have today, the the things that I get to do being a Christian are amazing. Um, I get to lead, or I've gotten to lead medical mission teams in um, different countries that, you know, you would never have pegged me as that person to do that. Um, That I have children, even after my choices, is amazing that God still chose to trust me with his little ones is a testimony to his grace and mercy. When John and I became Christians, you know, our life before that was very a worldly relationship. And then when we became parents, or became Christians and then became parents, our focus was always on wanting our kids to know Jesus and to know their heart, to know God's heart and to know their heart. Um, And so that has always been the, the main thing in our family is it's, it's God first and knowing God's heart and it's really helped us as our kids have been growing up that we we always keep that same focus that it's always God 
we're not going to change being Christians and we're not going to apologize for being Christians or apologize for a choice we make that might seem contrary to the rest of the world. And that's, I think, what makes our family really close. It gives us a chance to have relationships with our kids. And it's important. It's important to have those relationships. So if there's anybody out there watching and you feel like God's tugging on your heart, um, I would say jump. Jump in. Don't look back. Becoming a Christian has been the best thing in my life. Um, and you can be scared, but that's the beauty of it. The things that we think we're the most afraid of, once we step out on faith and we make that leap, everything becomes clear and it's so perfect. And you kind of kick yourself wondering, why did I wait so long to make this decision? Just jump. Don't think about it. Don't overanalyze it. I promise you, you will never look back and say this was a bad decision. Ever, 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 ever. So the biggest thing today as we're talking uh, is we just want to encourage you to go out and make a difference because that's that's really what it's all about. Yeah, um, for sure. And and one of the things that, that we've noticed, right, is in order to make a difference right now is you just have to be flexible. Very flexible. Yes. Yeah, so it's something that our church has had to learn. Um, it's it's this idea of, of figuring out how to move forward, mm -hmm. um, be flexible, mm -hmm. um, make a difference and, and create life change. Yeah. Um, and, and I mean, even from right now, what we're doing, yeah. uh, to, to the idea of what we've done over the past few months. And, yeah. and even when we go back to, to in-person services, things aren't going to look the same. It's going to be very different. It's yeah. still going to be very different. And, and we just have to be flexible. Mm -hmm. If we're going to make a difference in in our lives, if we're going to make a difference in your lives, if if you're going to make a difference in somebody else's life, we're just going to have to be flexible. We're going to have to move forward, yeah. make a difference, and be flexible. And mm -hmm. to create this opportunity for real life change mm -hmm. through Jesus to happen. Um, and, you know, we just to say it again, we have to be flexible and try new things, right? And and so I just, I think about this, I think about Jesus, right? Like, I like to just look through things in the way that, that Jesus did, and hey, so... What what would Jesus do, Jeff? Uh, well, he would be flexible. <laughs> he would be flexible. And so, and and you know what? We actually have a story of him being flexible, very right? Very flexible, yes. So in, in, um, in Luke chapter 5, right, it's this really popular story, and it's about Jesus calling, like, the first disciples, mm -hmm. right? But before that ever happens. Um, I'll just read it. Jesus, uh, in, in Luke chapter 5, verses 1 through 3, it says this, One day as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, I don't even know how to pronounce that. Let's but, call it good. That yeah, works. we're good. All right. Um, the people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats um, left there by fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a put it out a little from shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. Like, how great of a problem is that, number one? Mm -hmm. Right? That there were so many people there listening to Jesus that he had to, like, find a new spot. Like they were almost trampling him trying to get listen yeah. to him. Like, yeah. he's backing up, backing yeah. up, and then all of a sudden <laughs> Oop, it's there's heat. water. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't go back too far. That's right. Right? So, so he looks around, and, and, you know, like, how flexible is that, number one, right? That he's... He's not used to preaching the same way that he is. Can you imagine Jesus like walking in and thinking, "Oh, I have lights and a stage yeah. and a sound system to work yeah, with." Yeah, that's right. No. Instead, he's you know got this cliffside next to that's a right. next to a lake. Yeah. Right. But anyway, so <laughs> it's not even the normal way he's used to. Right. And so he looks around and he's like, "Here's a solution. I'm going to hop on these boats." And I'm gonna ask the fisherman to push me out just a little bit, and then I guess I'm, he just yelled louder, right? Like just, that's, just be louder. <laughs> just be, just be louder. Um, but you know, so Jesus just had to be super flexible. The people who were listening um, to the message had yeah. to be flexible. It probably wasn't exactly what they imagined was gonna happen, right. um, but they had to be flexible. Mm -hmm. But but you know who else had to be flexible? The fishermen. Yeah, they were trying to like make money that day. Yeah, they were trying to work. <laughs> they were trying. To, I'm trying to do this job here. This guy's over here. Hey, can I hang out in your boat and yell real loud? <laughs> yeah, can I, can I take your boat for a minute? Um, and so, and so the, these these fishermen had to be 
just really flexible. And we learned too that they were already kind of frustrated because they didn't really catch any fish either. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but but anyways, so so these fishermen had to be flexible. And and one of the greatest things in their lives happened, right? Because we learned we learned that these people were Peter, James, and John. Mm-hmm. The the owners of the boats were Peter, James, and John. Yeah. Three of the disciples, three of the the, the closest followers the of Jesus. People, yeah. 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 That's who these boats belong mm-hmm. to. And so in the midst of them being flexible, right, God did something amazing in their yeah. lives. Yeah. Right? Just because they were willing to be flexible. Mm-hmm. And so and so one of the one of the coolest things that that happens, one of the things that we go to all the time mm-hmm. is what Jesus says uh, in verse 10 of chapter 5. He says this, from now on you will fish for people, right? To be fishers of men. Right. And and so we think about that, right? That that through this idea of people being flexible, God created this desire for them to make a difference. Mm-hmm. And, and how did that make a difference? Well, they, they reached people. They became yeah. fishers of men. Um, and so we're not really sure what God has in store for First Baptist Church. Nope. I don't know. Nope. You know. If you had told me six months ago I was doing this, I would have been like, no, that's there's not. There's no way we're doing or, this. There's, yeah. there's no way that Chet and David let Cameron and I that's right. preach. There's we have no. the Sunday? Okay. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Right? <laughs> uh, and it's not going to be a live crowd. It's going to be a completely digital crowd. Yeah. Um, no, there's no, no way. Yeah. But And we don't know what, what God has in store. But I can tell you this. I'm, I'm 100% sure of this. Right? That if, if we're flexible... And if we will follow God's will, right, he is going to guide us to be fishers of men. Mm-hmm. He's going to. Yeah. He's going to, to provide opportunities for us, for our church, to, to bring true life change yeah. to I mean, people. Prime example is the December offering we talked about. Yeah. We had no idea about the pandemic coming, and we were able to supply the needs of multiple organizations and groups that are making a difference now because they got that support. Yeah. And, and, and even, and even so from, from that people, people are accepting Christ. Mm -hmm. True life change is happening as a result of us just being flexible Mm -hmm. and allowing, allowing God to move in us and through us and, and to make a difference. So, so we want to encourage you in this, that, that throughout this craziness that's happening, um, to be flexible and to allow God to use you to make a difference and to create real life change through Jesus. Hey, we want to thank you so much for being a part of our service today. Um, if, if today you were listening and, and maybe you've never had just that moment of true life change and and you know, the accepting of Christ as your Savior, um, we want to encourage you to talk to somebody. To somebody. Yeah. Um, and and we can be that somebody. We will gladly um, talk with you through that. And so if you want to, to message us or email us or even just reply down in the comments, yes, we would comment love right. to we would love to talk to you and walk you through that. Or if, or if you're excited about all that God has done um in First Baptist Church and yeah. through First Baptist Church, and you want to be a part of the family here at First Baptist, um, we'd encourage you to do the same. You can um, email us, you can uh, call us, or you can comment down below. We'd love to talk to you, um, and we'd love to, for you to be a part of the family here at First Baptist.